Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Buzz of Busy Crochet. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be talking with Dawn from Twice Sheared Sheep. She is located in Idaho, I believe, and I'm going to bring her on to the camera now. Hi, Dawn. Welcome hey, hey. to Buzz with Busy Crochet. I'm so glad that you joined me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely. This is going to be fun. You and I were chit-chatting a little bit before we started and there's, we've got so many commonalities between the two of us. So this should be a really good conversation. I'm going to go ahead and share a, a link that Dawn provided me with for her. Um, it is your newsletter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's for, for you to sign up for her, her newsletter. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you can um, keep up with all the buzz with Busy Crochet. Also, all of Dawn's information is going to be in the description box below after our um, chat is over. But let's go ahead and start with talk, by talking with Dawn. Tell us a little bit about who you are, like where you're from, your family, anything information-wise you'd like to share with us. Well, I'm Dawn Prickett. I'm the owner and lead designer, creator, everything of Twice Sheared Sheep. Um, that I am the mama of five kids who are now in the teenage and older stage, which means I get a lot more time to be business owner, um, that this was always my kind of stay at home mom job. Yeah. Um, and, um, it allowed me to be home with my littles when, when they were little and mm -hmm. now my babies are 15 and so they're not so oh little anymore. Gosh. Wow. Um, Isn't it crazy how fast that time goes? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, my oldest is now, I think he's 22. Um, oh in God, fact, man. my he and my husband are buying his very first car right now. So. Oh, how fun. That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. What else about me? I, I am a transplant here to Idaho. Um, I was born and raised in Colorado in the Denver area. Um, I have lived everywhere from in the middle of the suburbs to we lived quite rural for a little while. I had alpacas in my backyard. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Short-lived venture into um, the idea that I was going to be a shepherdess or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was so much easier arts, than it though. is. Fiber arts, you just kind of fall down a rabbit hole and you just keep digging sometimes. <laughs> All the loves. Yes. So did you ever get into creating your own yarn in that adventure? Um, I did. So um, in, in the way that in the fiber arts, you tend to fall down rabbit holes. And um, I I love to learn new things. Mm -hmm. um, that the first year that I started knitting really intensely, I, I learned cables and socks and lace and all the things in the same year, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But along the way, my mom has always been kind of a hippy dippy sort of, sort of lady, you know, she, <laughs> she's from the right era and, um, that she had a spinning wheel at one point. I, I think it was an Ashford traveler. There is this beautiful shop in Boulder, Colorado called spindles, shuttles, and skeins. I wow. think they closed a couple of years ago because the owners, um, were retiring. Uh -huh. But she had a spinning wheel. And so I, I took up spinning at some point. And that's why the alpacas came in is because I'm like, oh, well, I could spin yarn. And I realized, while I enjoy doing that personally, there's no way that that's ever going to, you know, make us any money as a business. And my, my alpacas, yeah. my alpacas did not enjoy being touched or petted or all the things You're that like, you want to do with, it. <laughs> with fluffy animals. And so, um, a, a little before we moved here to Idaho that um, we sold them because they were not earning their keep. And, yeah. You're you know, like, you're beautiful, but you gotta go. You're, you're not, you're not. Um, <laughs> so I did attempt um, that I, we do have some yarn in our shop right now though, that while I did not spin um, that we worked with a, with a mill, actually we worked with um, star Gaylor from Gaylor yarns. Okay. And she has an incredible mill in Peru that they, um, we told them exactly what kind of yarn we wanted. We wanted the, we, they told them the fiber content. We told them how fine of a fiber we wanted, the micron count, the colors, okay. the the ply structure, everything. And they put together this yarn for us. So the, the yarn that's in our shop right now is 
designed by is me, but merino? it wasn't yarn that I spun with my own hands. <laughs> is that the merino that you have in your shop? Is that yes, the merino? It is the merino shop? that we have in our shop. It's a worsted weight. We call it everyday merino because I wanted it to be kind of that workhorse sort of yarn mm -hmm. that you can do for anything. It's beautiful, and you've got a lot of really great shades. I'm getting a little too. bit of lag. Is that me? Um, it it might oh, be. Thank I, you. <laughs> you're not. I, you're, I'm getting a little bit of lag with you too. It just might be our internet is just is a little funky today. Um. I, am I still lagging for you? Stick with us, everybody. I'm wondering. Hold on. Let me see. If I switch to my hotspot, if that might help. We're just having a small technical difficulty. We'll continue in just a moment. Stick with us, folks. We are stuck. Alrighty, if you're watching, let me know if you are having problems watching this. Leave me a comment if you're having a difficulty today. Because it seems like we are stuck. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just hang out here a minute until Dawn comes back. See if she can join us again. So, how have you been? What you been doing? Talk to me, people. We're going to hang out here until we can see if Dawn comes back. Well, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, there she is. So sorry, is this better? <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a little bit better, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Oh, no, that is perfectly fine. It happens, man. That happens. Alrighty, so um, all right, so we were talking about alpacas, and they don't like to be touched. They don't. And, it's so sad. <laughs> uh, one other thing that I do have to ask you too, and it's probably going to be such a, a dumb question, but uh, I know that like Idaho grows a lot of potatoes, like Wisconsin has a lot of cows. Uh, do you have a really great potato selection there? Like we have a really great cheese selection in Wisconsin. Okay. Here's the deal. I'm kind of disappointed in the potato selection here in Idaho, honestly. When I was in Colorado, you can buy a bag of potatoes and they have potatoes like this big, like enormous baking potatoes wow. in Colorado. And they say on the bag they came from Idaho. But when you come to, when I go to the grocery store to buy just potatoes, they're like this big. They're oh like goodness. less than my fist. And I'm like, I, where are my big baking potatoes? Right? Right. I mean, I'm but, in the state, but you like the school fundraisers, you can get like a, just a giant bag of russet potatoes. And when they deliver it to you, like they're still coated in dirt inside the bag and everything like oh, for no. a school fundraiser, you could buy like a, you know, 50 pound bag of potatoes. So. Wow. That's incredible. Um, isn't it funny how each state has its thing? It is. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's talk about Twice Sheared Sheep. How did you come up with that name for your business? So um, you remember the whole rabbit hole thing about how yes. we are in fiber arts, um, that 20 years ago, almost, um, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had two tiny little kids and zero money. Um, it, the internet was still fairly young to the extent that, you know, Ravelry didn't exist. YouTube didn't exist. Yeah. Um, that, um, we had blogs and we had, um, a Yahoo group newsletter, email newsletter, you okay. know, for knitting information or whatever. But I saw a blog post somewhere that talked about how to unravel thrift store sweaters for yarn. Um, 
and I had just discovered wool yarn and I'm like, well, I would really love to be able to knit with wool yarn, but Michael's and Joanne's and things have a lot of wool yarn. And so I, I thought I'd give it a try. And that the first time I unraveled a thrift store sweater, it was the most obnoxious process that I'd ever done. Oh, no. um, but it, it, it was tedious and I didn't have a skein winder or anything. So I had, you know, cause I had little kids, I had a baby gate. And so mm -hmm. I set the baby gate at, mm -hmm. at 36 inches, which is, you know, and wrapped the yarn around that way to make my hank so that I could wash it. But, um, and I'm like, I'm, and I didn't even know how to wash them. I put them in the sink. I didn't like squeeze the the water out or anything. I just hung it up on the towel bar and they just dripped for days. In my <laughs> oh no. Um, but you know, a couple days later I was looking at those sweaters and I'm like, I could do that again. And <laughs> it's like I, I, I had unraveled enough sweaters that I had more mm -hmm. yarn than I personally could knit. And so then I discovered that there were people on eBay who were selling recycled yarn from thrift store sweaters. Really? And so I, you know, I, I put yarn up on eBay and I said, if it sells, it sells, maybe I'll make $500 this month or, you know, a couple hundred dollars this month. Maybe I could, you know, buy groceries and it sold. And wow. that was the very first thing that I ever sold for this business. And because I was selling recycled yarn, I named our company. I thought of it as like a second shearing for the sheep. So yeah. I named our company twice sheared sheep. That's awesome. And now it's this tongue twister that everybody has to say very slowly. <laughs> oh, I think it's great. I'm, and I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm so terrible. I automatically tend to jump forward and think of other things when I read stuff. That's very interesting. And I immediately thought twice baked potatoes. So <laughs> I, I love it. I think it's great. It's it's um, catchy and it helps you remember your name. Alrighty. So I would like to ask you a little bit about the stuff that's on your website because I was um, zooming through there and um, I found this long list of things that I love about your website. So the first oh. thing I love is that you are able to make a wish list of the products that you have on your website. I think that's I just a fantastic thing. I love that. Um, it, it's good because you can share your wish list with somebody else and they can buy buy the things on your wish list. But my favorite way to use the wish list is that if something is out of stock on the website, mm -hmm. if you put it on your wish list, the website itself will notify you. We always refer to it as the website fairies. We'll, we'll notify you immediately as soon as we update the stock. So That's if there's- incredible. I love it. And I'm always wondering, how do people find things right away? That That's how. Is they have it on their wish list. <laughs> I've got my own fairy in my pocket. Um, okay, yes. so this, the second thing that I found on your website that I really, really love was in your frequently asked questions section. You have got helper videos in each section to teach you how to use the different tools that you have on your website. We've been trying really hard to make sure that we've got videos that show you how to do, how to use all the things, because sometimes, um, sometimes tools are really intuitive and sometimes they require a little bit of education or a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, that our row counters in particular have been something that once you use it, you're like, how on earth did I function without this? But when you just see the chain, you're like, I, I think I'll just click my phone. You know, and wake it up in 10 minutes um, or, you know, post-it note that wanders away. Or, yeah. um, but it it's one of those things that there are quite a few things on our website that were specifically requests from customers. Mm -hmm. And so while you may not think about that, that's a problem that you have when it is a problem that you have, you know, mm -hmm. you'll say, oh, my gosh, I I'm amazed that you that that's available and that's something that that's there but I want to have videos that show everybody how to use all the things yeah so. so specifically the melody clips one of the that's one of the things that I absolutely loved and you and I talked about it before we started that that's something that you developed yourself yeah. yes um I because I did a lot of wire wrapping type things that um almost all of the stitch markers and row counters and things in our shop are handmade um they started out that. being they started out being handmade by me and my own two hands. Um, and then we got to the point where it was more than 
my two hands could handle. And so now mm -hmm. we have a team of lovely ladies. Um, that, Which they're all on the website. So you get to see. Who's are, <laughs> you can see all their faces. Um, that uh, So some of them work here in the office with me and some of them are stay at home moms too. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of my favorite things. I told you that this was my stay at home mom job and mm -hmm. that um, I love that we have some, we can have the flexibility that we have ladies that it's now their stay at home mom job and they don't have to do any of the entrepreneurial stuff that I did. They can just that's, get a paycheck, That's awesome. which is what we all wanted. But Absolutely. yeah, the, the, melody, the melody clips were developed because I was trying to look for a really nice way to do a removable stitch marker mm -hmm. that I could make with a single piece of wire, mm -hmm. but also that you could um, put on and remove one handed. Um, yeah. That they don't a look lot like of times on anything. I I like the fact that you like tuck in all of the ends, all of you know, like mm -hmm. there's nothing on that's gonna catch on your yarn. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for because you know your tools should should be functional. They shouldn't be frustrating. So right. Um, because yeah. then I noticed uh, one of the things that I was looking at on your website was the um, row counters, and um, at first I was like, well, gosh, that's. That would be really amazing if you, I'm sorry if you're hearing my dog. She's having oh, fun with me. Um, <laughs> but um, if you could use that for crochet, and then I was like, well, how would you use that for crochet? And then you would like answer the question right away. How do you use this for crochet? So I, I love the fact that you have these really innovative products on your website that you've really made available for everybody. I mean, it's not just knit supplies and it's not just crochet because so many places they really specialize in just one or the other mm -hmm. but I like that you automatically take both of the fiber arts and put them together and make it accessible for everybody I try really hard I mean because the reality is, is we all love yarn and mm -hmm. there you know we can we can play with yarn in so many so many different ways um I'm always asking crocheters what they need because mm. the reality is is crochet is so free form and is but really like crochet you need like a some kind of a hook stitch marker sometimes if you're doing mm -hmm. the amiga ruby is that how you say it where you do round and I round, say round. Ruby. i don't know that i'm right <laughs> um you, you may need a stitch marker but you really you yep. need yarn and a hook and that's it yes and so i'm always asking i'm like what do you need i i will give you everything that you need but i realize that knitters man need a whole lot <laughs> more stuff <laughs> you do they need all of the trinkets <laughs> you need like, all if, the things <laughs> if you're going to be if you are an ac accessory obsessed kind of person who likes to wear all the jewelry and stuff like that you want to be a knitter if you are just a plain jeans and t-shirt kind of girl you'll want to be a crocheter <laughs> so also I would like for you to tell me a little bit more about the different kinds of themed gifts that you have on your website because I noticed a couple of them they would make great you know mom's day gifts um birthday gifts Christmas kind of stuff and that you can put that on the wish list too right absolutely so um one of the that we have a lot of people who tell us that you know the great thing about the wish list is they can put something on their wish list and it will um let let their significant other know that you know there might be something here or and then they don't have to pick something out out for themselves mm -hmm. um i i'm a huge collector of things and as you can see i also do watercolor so we have all of these storage tins on our website and i try and make sure that we've got charms that match or vice versa so that we can do a lovely little gift set and it will have the things that you need so it'll have a cute little storage tin to keep things um, in it'll have a row counter it'll have a set of stitch markers and everything in our shop comes in four sizes or almost everything comes in four sizes small okay. medium large and extra large mm -hmm. because hooks and needles come in different sizes mm -hmm. and while you can use a really big loop on a tiny little needle it's not very enjoyable yeah and you can use a tiny little hook on thicker crochet, but it's also not very enjoyable. No. So, <laughs> so we want to make sure that, that you um, have the ability to, to choose so that it's perfectly suited for whatever it is that you're doing. So it'll fit your needles and your hook like a glove. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with the, the wish list and the gift sets on our website is mm -hmm. I'm not entirely positive if it 
if it transfers over the size that you request. Oh, okay. I think it does, but sometimes we've gotten husbands who order the wrong size mm -hmm. and then we're, we're happy to do an exchange or something like that. But um, I never know if this was a fault of the wish list or whether it was just a really excited, happy husband to find <laughs> some. <laughs> we love excited, happy husbands. We do, yes. Um, okay, so could you tell me then a little bit, of, I mean, are there any kinds of um, things that you have? Because we were talking about your your sock cow that you have going on. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you say it's your magic no gauge sock. So how does yes. that work? So um, the magic no gauge socks are honestly, it's a, it's a basic sock pattern. Okay. That, um, that allows you to try the socks on as you go mm -hmm. so that you can get a perfect fit. Um, I, I designed the pattern with the intention of it could either be a beginner's first sock mm -hmm. that there's enough instructions in there in the same way that we've got videos in our frequently asked questions there in the pattern, it has, um, photos of how to do the stitches okay. and then a link to our resources page on our website that has videos of everything. Um, okay. So it could be a basic beginner sock or it's a blank canvas sock that can be like that vanilla sock that you just, it's the same one that you knit every time. And it it's the formula that I have always used to knit socks. Okay. Um, Kind of my basic, basic sock. And if you are more advanced and you want to swap out the plain stockinette part for mm -hmm. a stitch pattern or a cable or a lace or something like that, go for it because it's a, um, it's a blank canvas, oh, but, that's nice. um, we, we have a Facebook group that, that is, that goes with it. It's a really relaxed sort of knit along in uh -huh. that, you know, come in whenever you, whenever you want to, and there's no pressure to finish by a certain time. We're all just kind of talking about the parts of the sock and as you're knitting and, you know, answering questions as people need help and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, that I've realized that while I can design, I don't enjoy designing everything, yeah. but I really do like designing things that are useful and helpful, which is why it's a free pattern because oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, are they are toe up or are they a, a cuff down? So they are a toe up um, okay. and they're done using magic loop because I'm, I'm a magic loop girl. Um, you I have can't... to learn how to do that. I've just, I've never learned how to do that yet. <laughs> I, I, I have had a couple of people do them using, um, double points just fine. Mm -hmm. Um, that I've always liked magic loop because I can use one needle for like an entire sweater. So the yeah. same needle that can be the body I can then use to do the sleeves or I can do an entire hat. So the whole base, and even when it gets teeny tiny at the top, I can use the same needle and I don't have to have four different sets of needles or I don't have to swap out, which is why I've always mm -hmm. liked magic loop, yeah. but they can be done to using double points. If that's your preference, it is toe up. And the uh -huh. reason is, is I don't give any stitch counts. Okay. So that's what makes them magic and no gauge, meaning mm -hmm. you can use any yarn. You can use any needle. Mm -hmm. You can knit them for any foot size. Um, that's awesome. that, the pattern does have kind of average um, measurements. Like this is about how wide a person's foot may be, mm -hmm. but we know, you know, some people have narrow feet, some people have wide feet. So you knit the toe, you start at the toe and you increase on either side until mm -hmm. the toe is wide enough for your foot. Sure. And you do that by measuring on top of your foot or trying it on. And then once you're, once it's wide enough, then you knit the foot to the length that you want. Um, there are measurements in the average measurements in the pattern, or you can use one of our sock rulers that have okay. um, that have shoe sizes on it. So you knit to the, the length of your foot, and then you do a short row heel, and then okay. you knit your cuff as long as you would like your cuff. And okay. So when I say it's a basic pattern, it really is. But yeah. because you're trying it on as you go, you don't have to worry about the stitch count because I, nice. if you use a worsted weight yarn or you use a fingering weight yarn, it'll work either way. You just knit until it's wide enough for your foot. Oh, that's awesome. Um, one of the things that I really um, love about 
what you're what you're talking about is the fact that it is the tool that you brought up, the sock ruler. I did mm -hmm. take a peek at that and because I've been knitting socks lately and there's been a few people where I didn't know, like, okay, so they tell me what size shoe they wear. Well, I have I have no idea what, you know, like what length that is. I'm totally getting one of those sock tools. Um, because uh I feel like that is something really, really needed if you're I tend to get people who are like, oh, can you make me a pair of socks? And then they give me no information. Like I can't try it on them, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I, I love the fact that you've got something that actually tells you this stuff, because if you make socks for people that you don't know, for me, that is so stressful. Well, and it's got sizes on it from children all the way to adult men. So That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. Do you have uh, any other special things that you've got going on on your website that we need to know about? So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Okay. So um, we opened up our advent box for pre-orders to our surprise box people last mm -hmm. week. Oh, cool. We have not opened it up to the rest of the world yet and mm -hmm. aren't planning on, on that until next Friday. Ooh. But I'm going to give you guys the secret link on how to find our advent box. Secret um, link. Our, Secret link. So it's twicesharedsheep.com slash advent. And that'll take you to our 2023 advent box, which has kind of been our signature and what we're known for. Uh -huh. um, that we do a 25 day advent calendar. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of advent calendars in, in the knitting and crochet space tend to be um, yarn calendars or yarn countdown calendars. So almost every day in the calendar is yarn and you usually have a pattern and you knit along with the pattern at the end of the month. And I had quite a few people tell me that they they got really frustrated because they get behind in December as you're trying to keep up with all of the days. Yeah. Or they'd open all the boxes and they were all, you know, while we all love getting yarn, it's every day was yarn. And it was just, oh, I have a new color of yarn. And yeah. so our, our box is different in that because we're a tools shop first and foremost, um, that it's much more like a traditional advent calendar where you might have a little trinket inside or a little piece of candy or that every day is a little something different. And they are all tools or useful things um, that are geared towards knitters and crocheters. And we do have a separate knit box or a crochet box so that you can use everything in the box. I think this year our box, it we promise that it's going to have a, um, a skein of yarn, that it's going to have a pattern, that it's going to have um, some of our signature tools like a row counter or stitch markers or things like that. But then we we like to use our advent box as mm -hmm. kind of the, the way that we introduce new things that we've been developing. Fun. So the suckler was brand new in the box last year. Um, we used it to introduce several brand new things. And so the first people who ever get it or ever get to see it are our advent people. And oh, sometimes, cool. sometimes they're the only people who ever get it. So wow, Ooh, so that's really something special. The box and never ever release it in the shop. It depends on how popular it is. It depends on if it's possible for us to reproduce it or to to get it again. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's one of my favorite things all year. And I love. I I did have a box here because I was showing my my assistant earlier. One of the things that I love is that it's not little bags. It's a real box. And we try. Yes. Yes. And all the different sizes that That's we can fit. Fun. I'll admit, though, it is it is an exercise to make sure that I can get things that will fit in a box. <laughs> <laughs> because there are some things that you that I cannot put in an advent box because they won't fit inside a box. Sure, sure. But yes, so that is. That is on our website right now at twiceyourcheap.com slash. Oh, fun. Okay. So if that's okay, I mean, I'll take it off here if it's not, but I did share the link in yes. the chat box. Yes. Um. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to do some just for fun kinds of questions. 
unless there's anything else that you'd love to share with us about your business. Anything oh, no. that you ask oh. away. I am an open book. I told you there's nothing off limits. So ask me all the fun questions. So do you have any charities that you work with or do you have any passion projects like that? I don't have any charities that I work specifically for or through. Um, I love um, and we have donated several times to um, Heifer International because I love the idea of um, woolly fiber creatures being the livelihood for people around the world. I love yeah. the idea. I am an entrepreneur and I know <laughs> the power that having a family business can be in your family. Um, I also really, really love the mission of my friend, Erin. Um, she runs a website called My Local Wool. And the goal of that, of that website is to connect everyday um, knitters and spinners with um, shepherds and farms so that they can sell directly from sheep yarn directly to people and oh, connecting cool. them together. And I love that too. So her web, that website is my local wool. And my local wool. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Some more fun questions. Do you have any favorite books, TV shows or movie genres that you are currently into? Oh my goodness. This is, this is always the dangerous thing because I, I love stories uh -huh. I was telling my, my kids that I can't live without stories in my life. I can tell that I, I get cranky if I'm not currently reading something. <laughs> um, that one of my favorite authors, her name is Maggie Steve Vodder. Okay. And one of my all-time favorite books is called The Scorpio Races. And it's young adult fiction. It's a little bit fantasy. Okay. And when I tell people about it, they think that I'm a little bit nuts. So I grew up um, as a horse girl. I did 4-H growing up. I grew up on horseback. And so this book is about horses. It's kind of set in, I think, 1920s-ish, okay. um, somewhere in like the Shetland Isles or something like that, somewhere in English island. But it is about a an island where every year in October, horses come out of the ocean. So think the, myth, the mythology of a Kelpie, uh -huh. which is a a mythical, like kind of monstrous horse. Yes. Um, they come out of the ocean and the people on this island capture the horses and they run a, a horse race with them. Oh, but, these are, but these are monster horses. And so they're meat eating and they kill people. And they <laughs> <laughs> But it's the most beautiful book about longing and wanting and, you know, of course, horses and how it feels to fly with the wind in your face. And so... Oh, it, it sounds like my, my jam, you know, I'm a, I'm a fantasy lover and, uh, I like my gory stuff. I'm not your average bear. I kind of like, uh, I love Jesus, but I also love horror movies, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of a conundrum. Um, all right. So we know that you're a knitter and I know you said that you've crocheted. Do you have any other crafts that you like to dabble in? Um, so I, <laughs> I'm also a painter. Um, uh, most of the tins on our website are my watercolor art. And they're so um, cute. Oh, thank you. I'm taking a class right now through a company called Evolve Art. So I'm taking a class on oil painting. Mm. And I've always wanted to be a fine artist, like paintings and mm. uh, portraiture and landscapes and things like that. So um so I'm doing that right now. I've dabbled in quilting and many, many other things, but I realize I really enjoy doing things with my hands in small portable mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. And so while I've done digital art or done things like that, it's not the same as the visceral reaction of holding something in your hand. Yeah, I've quilted sure. and I, the machine is not the same as making fabric by hand. And I used to sew clothes for my kids when they were really small and I loved the final product, but it was that cutting out and all of the tedium in between choosing the fabric and having the finished product that was like, okay, I just can't do this anymore. Well, and the reality is, is there's no, there's no take backsies in, <clears throat> in sewing <laughs> that in For knitting sure. your crochet, if you screw up or you can, you're like, I wonder if this will work and you'll, you'll work a little section and you're like, nah, that's not going to work. And you can rip it out and it's fine. 
yeah. you know, but there's no take backsies in sewing or weaving or a lot of these other things. <laughs> yeah. Once you do it, you do it. We have a question from Yoke, who is one of our uh, watchers in the crochet along group on, she's also an admin there on Facebook. And she says, are there any other knitter or knitting pattern designers that you would like to work with personally? Oh, I don't know. So, um, I think like, like everybody, I'm a little bit in love with Andrea Maori, just because, you know, her photos are so gorgeous and her, she's so prolific as a, as a designer, mm -hmm. but I, some of my favorite patterns are by just more independent sort of designers. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I, I, I'm a huge person for collaboration. I love working with mm -hmm. other people and I love, um, kind of building each other up and things like that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I have a, a designer that I would love to to work with or to, I, I'm still just a little bit awestruck by people that I consider maybe real designers versus. Same, the same. I, I'm always like, oh gosh, they're doing my dream job. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm designing too, but. <laughs> yes, I, why do we do that? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, when you're all adults in the room, but you're looking for the adult or your adult. Yeah. So I'm always I, I've hit middle that. age. I don't think it's possible for me to, you know, I've realized, oh, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to be that person now. <laughs> you are the adult or your adult because my 28 year old and my 26 year old are always coming to me for the answer. So yeah, <clears throat> I completely understand that. I apologize. I had this like, um, phlegmy coughing thing happening. Um, so I'm going to try and make that stop. Um, but moving on, do you have a favorite place that you like to create in? I know you said that you like portable things, but do you have a place inside of your, you know, your space that you love to just hang out? That's your happy spot. Um, so obviously I have my, my office in the studio here. Um, but usually this is where work gets done. Yeah. Um, I have, um, when we first moved into our house here in Pocatello that, our, our bedroom had this little cutout by a window. It's not really a bay window. It's just like the walls went a little farther where the window is. And, <laughs> um, that when we, when we moved in, that the, the people who had owned the house before had like almost like stage curtains that closed off that entire section, you know, or whatever. Oh and my goodness. What I did is I ripped those down. And my goal was to always put a window seat in there because I, I have enough romantic in me or, you know, that mm -hmm. I saw TV shows. Like, Victorian spirit. Yes. And so a couple of years ago, my husband and I put together that corner and it's big enough for two bookshelves and for a little storage bench in there. Wow. And so I can sit on that storage bench and lean back against one bookshelf and my, the windows off to my left. And that's my favorite little cozy nook to just kind of sit and... I sit in there a lot on Wednesday nights when we do our um, our knit club zooms for, for uh -huh. our company or whatever. Is I'll sit in that window. The lighting's not great, but <laughs> it makes me feel like you know the lovely Victorian times where I could sit there with my tea and my and my book and absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I remember as a kid, I've always been kind of um, I've always called myself a little bit weird. But I was the kid who would always like dig myself down into something and, you know, burrow, burrow and, and come up with stories and little fantasies here and this and that and the other. And I was always writing something in my head. So um, I love that idea of the romantic Victorian window where you've got the little window seat and it just, it's a great, it's a great visual. <laughs> um, so do you have a favorite crafting snack or drink? Oh, well, um, so we got a soda stream machine for Christmas. I did. Oh, fun. And my, um, we've been trying to put together all sorts of concoctions and, uh, um, all sorts of mocktails. Cause I don't drink, but, um, that I, we've realized that one of my favorite combinations is Shasta makes a raspberry cream soda. Uh-huh. And if you fill a cup half full with that and half full with pineapple juice, 
and stir that up. It is the most wonderful sort of fruity something or other. Oh my gosh. I can only imagine. <laughs> and see, it's I would probably it's lovely. I would probably even go so far as to add just a little bit of ginger ale to that to give it just a little bit of a fuzz. Well, because it's a raspberry cream soda, it does. Oh yeah, have, that's right. You said it's a soda. Yeah. What am I thinking? So it does have a. It does. It is bubbly, but the the ginger ale would be even more bubbly. And we it, see. We don't drink either, and so uh, you know we have we call them spritzers in our house. We do mm -hmm. cranberry juice and Sprite. Mm -hmm. And that that's our our little fancy drink. I've realized if you add pineapple to just about anything, it's <laughs> magical. <laughs> My husband works for Costco, and so he brought home a flat of the little pineapple cans. Oh, of how nice! Of juice. Um, and we have all of the like. So one of the odd things about Pocatello is that while most cities have about fifty coffee shops, you know, along the streets, which we have. But we also have like 10 little fancy soda shops. Like that's really? you go all they all they really sell is like cookies and soda. And so um that have you ever seen the tall pump syrup things, whatever mm -hmm. that they'll so we have a whole collection of those lined up in our house too. And oh, how fun, you know, add pineapple flavor to anything and it, it makes it better. <laughs> so those are like the soda syrups, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has always been my dream and somebody's going to run away with this and do it a, a big, huge store. But I have always wanted to have a, an old fashioned kind of like they had the, um, pharmacy counters and, and where you serve old fashioned Sundays and old fashioned sodas and ice cream sodas and all of that kind of stuff and call it the soda jerk. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Wouldn't that be just the most fun, but no, I, I've never realized that like, there's places that actually have like soda shops because, you know, I've seen um, when we lived in a little town in Wisconsin, there was a little coffee shop and they had the Italian soda flavors and stuff like that. And you could get some of those there, but they're not real huge down here in Florida. Here you've got lots of Starbucks and little um, coffee shops and stuff like that. But the soda pop is just, it's not a, it's not a big one down here. Everything is a Coke here and you either have Dr. Pepper or you have Coke. Interesting. Isn't yeah, it weird? It's a little bit strange that we have so many, and it's not like you picture like the soda shop with the glass, you know, float mm -hmm. or things like that. No, it comes in the same take take out soda container that you get at any, you know. But so you there's can nothing just, romantic about it at all. Nothing romantic about it at all. But you know, you you can get uh, every every flavor under the sun, and you wow. can start with a you know with a Powerade or you could start with a energy drink or you could start with a Sprite or a Dr. Pepper or anything that you want and add all the flavors, um, whipped cream, all the wow. things. Wow. That's fun. We do have a couple of comments here. I do want to make sure that we, uh, say hi to everybody. you also said that she likes Liza, Liza's Layden and Stephen West from West Knits. Are you familiar with them? I'm not with Liza. Oh, and I'm not familiar with Liza Layden, but um, Stephen West, um, everything that I hear is the most delightful human being on the planet. He and, is so um, I, I started his um, knit along last December that mm -hmm. had the, um, it, it, it wasn't I-cord sections, but it was like a garter stick stitch section that was kind of like I-cord and it made these little ladders and then you looped the ladders up brilliant like blew my mind brilliant yeah, he's incredible um i will admit that i think his designs are somewhat more flamboyant than i tend to personally wear in my life but me too like the the architecture and the yeah. of how he does is so amazing he is a smart smart man and from everything mm. that i hear he's just kind, delightful, wonderful human being too. So yeah, it, he seems like it. I, and his work is so beautiful. And like you said, it is a little bit more um, flamboyant than I would wear, but the colors are just so incredible. I'm very big fan of very colorful things. And, you know, as I sit here in my black shirt, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I love color. love to look at it, love to work with it. Um, let's see, Neve. Uh, she is actually the admin in my group. She says she loves her a cuppa and a book in a nook. So 
we are definitely connecting with those people that love your, your reading corner. And then Yoki is just um, clarifying. She said, Liza is a, she's German and she makes shawls. So it must be oh. similar to what Stephen West does as well. Well, uh, when you say that somebody makes shawls, there is a wide gamut because there is um, Stephen West, very architectural type shawls. And then there mm -hmm. are a lot of the super fine, lacy, gauzy mm -hmm. sort of shawls too. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not seeing as many of those lately. I think lace is... That is particularly the really gauzy lace is kind of on the way out. I'm seeing a lot of um, more structured, thicker, more architectural sort of things right now. Yeah, yeah. I know that my my admin Neve, she really loves making the really super fine lacy ones, and she's done a few mm -hmm. that are just absolutely incredibly beautiful. And that to me is like even such a difference in just the way that yarn is used and, you know, depending on what you do with it, you can create so many amazing things. Absolutely. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and I want to find out from you, um, anybody that would be wanting to start as either a designer or somebody that wants to be entrepreneurial as you are, what advice would you give them as far as, like what to focus on and what things to let go of, you know, there's going to be important and there's going to be things that we like to hyper-focus on, but really aren't that important. What would you say to that? Oh, we could have a whole thing just on advice for starting, starting out. Um, yeah, I think sure. particularly as a designer, mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've, I've realized is we tend to be people who, who say, well, I can do that, but it doesn't mean that you you should do it all the time. That mm -hmm. um, I I realized that it's still important. I I learned to knit and I love to knit because and crochet because it's it's a release. I love to feel the yarn in my hands, um, mm -hmm. and I love the 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 monotony of the stitch after stitch and things like that. Mm -hmm. It, it compression sort of thing yeah but you force yourself to be the designer for everything that you knit or everything that you crochet mm -hmm. you lose all of that mm -hmm. um, I think that it's true in business and in in just general fiber arts that you personally do not have to do everything yeah it's it's not cheating if you use somebody else's pattern mm -hmm. to make something it's not cheating if you um, use Canva and use graphics that mm -hmm. somebody else designed. You didn't have to hand draw them yourself. Yeah. It's okay to use templates. Yeah. It's okay to um, hire help. It um, That was always a hard thing for me because I know that I can do everything. Yeah. And I enjoy doing most things. But then what suddenly when you're doing everything, you no longer enjoy things. Yeah. And well, it becomes that job. Yeah, you don't want what should be bringing you joy to be the thing that makes you want to lay cry cry on the floor because, <laughs> yes. which I have done. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't need to be curled up on the floor bawling our eyes out. No, we don't. Yes. It's not a good look. Well, and it's not great for life. No, you it know? truly, it really isn't. <clears throat> what? Okay, I'm going to talk to you as as a mom entrepreneur. Um, how do you feel like your, your journey through being a mompreneur has impacted your kids? Like, what do you feel like there are some things that you've actually been able to see or hear coming out of them that they watched you go through something and have been able to use it in their life? Sometimes I... I wish that I feel like it, I could see that it made more impact one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've essentially been an entrepreneur the entire life of my children. Mm -hmm. um, and mostly because I, while I wanted to be a stay at home mom to take care of them, that was very, very important to me. I'm also not the person who can vacuum your house every day and that be <laughs> the thing that fulfills me. <laughs> That has never been me. And yeah, so me um, the mom guilt in me worries that 
I have been away too much or have been mm-hmm. focused on business too much, or there have been too mm-hmm. many times where I told them we can't do this because I have to work. Yeah. Um, I have worried now that my my kids are teenagers and I've moved out of my house into an office and I actually go to work mm-hmm. now that yeah. um you know, they're unsupervised more and they're more, um, and that they feel abandoned, but I have never heard them say that they feel abandoned. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm forced to not hover parent, which has been good yeah. because, um, it, it would be really easy for me to want to do everything <clears throat> and I physically cannot do that. Mm-hmm. And so they have to figure stuff out. My, mm-hmm. um, my now senior in high school, you know, that he's to the point where he'll get himself a ride to almost every activity that he needs to go to, which That's is a great fun. skill in life. And the yeah. mom guilt side of me says, have I abandoned him? That is it terrible that his mom didn't drive him? But yeah. I also know that it's a great life skill that he's yes. able to take care of things like that. Um, <clears throat> I feel like while I wish my children believed that they could do anything that they wanted to do, maybe mm-hmm. more than they think that they could. Mm-hmm. Um, I laugh that I, um, my husband and I are really great compliment to each other because I'm the entrepreneur. I'm the one who um, is a little bit more ambitious. Um, mm-hmm. The one who is pushing for new things or to do new things. The one who has all of these ideas and he is steady and solid as a rock. Um, is, he's the is one. he an overthinker by chance? Because I was going to say, you guys sound an awful lot like me and my husband. <laughs> um, he might be because he's the one who, when I say, I have this great idea, he'll tell me 50 ways of why it won't work. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, we, we're married <laughs> to the same guy. But I, I say that my my children have a nice balance of the two, the two of us. And so while I am highly ambitious and I will be, you know, excited to do all the things my mm-hmm. kids look at it and they're like, I know how much work that takes. Mm-hmm. Eh. <laughs> so, yeah. But they're just now heading into adulthood. And so what I would hope that they would have learned is that there is no one path through life. Mm-hmm. You know, that I have a college degree. I have a, a bachelor's in international affairs and Russian. Oh, um, girl. <laughs> Do I use that in my professional life? No. <laughs> but, um, but that there are so many ways to support your family. There are so many ways to feed yourself. There are so many ways to be fulfilled. There are a million ways to learn anything that you want to learn. Absolutely. Um, that there is there is nothing that is out of your reach. So that's what I would hope that they would learn. I don't know yeah. whether they got that or not. Well, and you'll find too that um, my kids are just a little bit older than yours. Um, My son, who is my youngest and he's 26, he has said to me, you know, mom, watching you chase after your dream all of these years is what made me chase after mine. So, um, because he's he's working towards being a, a comic book writer right now and he's decided to finally go back to school to be a publisher eventually. And um, so you may find that as they begin to really start to live life and chase after their real dreams, that you're going to be the inspiration behind it. Well, and honestly, that dream that you had at 20 doesn't have to be your dream at 40. No, absolutely not. It's okay to change your mind. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Alrighty. Do you have any parting words that you would like to leave with our viewers um, about your business, yourself, anything we've talked about today? Um, I don't know. It has been a lovely conversation. I love how things have just kind of mellowed now into a, a natural end here. That one of the things that I love about working in this job and in this community particularly is I feel like our community is full of some of the kindest, most wonderful humans on the planet. I agree. I mean, I always say that no other group of people would spend weeks or months on a project and several hundred dollars and then just give it away. Yeah. You know, that the kindest, generous, most wonderful people and that I, I feel so privileged that my job 
is to get to be a part of that community mm -hmm. and really as a tool designer to um to find ways to help you get to enjoy what you enjoy even more. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, I love this. I do. I love it. <laughs> Me too. I, I agree with you. It's very, very fulfilling to be a part of a community that does, or it's very, very much filled with sowers and givers. Mm -hmm. So, well, I have so much enjoyed speaking with you today. I hope that everybody who has had the chance to um, join in with us, and if you're coming in later, um, make sure that you drop Dawn a note and let her know that you love talking with her today. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say goodbye to you. But if you wouldn't mind hanging around just a minute and we'll do a proper goodbye off camera. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to our viewers today. So thank you for being with us today, Dawn. Hang on just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us for today's episode of Buzz, The Buzz with Busy Crochet. We've been talking with Dawn from Twice Sheared Sheet. Make sure that you follow and like and subscribe so that you know when I'm doing the next Buzz with Busy Crochet. And make sure that you follow all of Dawn's information. Her information is going to be in the description box below. And that you get hooked up with her newsletter so that you are in touch with everything that she's going to be doing in the future. All right. Thanks so much for joining us today and I'll see you the next.